Summary of Letters to Alice on First Reading Jane Austen by Faye Weldon The book starts with unnamed narrator writing a letter from Cairns, Australia to her 18-year-old sister, Alice. The writer, whose name the reader finds out at the end of the letter is Faye, hasn't seen Alice in 16 years, but her mother, Faye's sister Enid, says that Alice has dyed her hair black and green. Alice has told Faye that, even though she is studying literature in college, she doesn't see the point of much of what she reads, especially the works of Jane Austen. Faye doesn't know how she will be able to explain books to Alice, but she still tries. Faye admits that it's hard to enjoy serious reading in a world full of distractions like TV and bestsellers, but she urges Alice to try to understand the pleasures of a good book. Faye tells Alice about a place she calls the City of Invention, which is a metaphor for how important writing is. Faye tells Alice that in the City of Invention, all the architects are writers and the people who come to visit are readers. They come to explore and enjoy the beauty and excitement of the many different houses. Faye shows Alice around the city, pointing out how the areas are different, how some buildings stand the test of time while others fall, and how some places are always the most popular with tourists. Faye also hints in her description that she has been going to the city since she was a child, when her parents split up and she went to live with her dad while her sister Enid stayed with their mom. Faye says that Alice needs to see more of the City of Invention if she wants to understand Jane Austen. She also knows that Alice wants to write her own book, but she tells her to wait until she is older and knows the city better. Faye keeps writing to Alice. In each letter, she talks about a different part of literature, especially Jane Austen's works. She also gives hints about what has happened in both her life and Alice's. In her next letter, she talks about how happy she is to have just finished a book and how much she loves that feeling. Faye goes on to talk about the different internal and external pressures that keep writers from writing, such as the idea of the muse, the views and needs of friends and family, and the social pressure on women to be charming even when they are working on creative projects. She says that life's stresses can be tiring, but they can also give you the inspiration you need to make something new. Faye is interested in how a writer's time in history can affect their work, so she tells Alice all about the times when Jane Austen lived. Faye says that Austen's books are neither boring nor shy. Instead, they are a thoughtful and, in some ways, angry response to the world around her. Faye talks to Alice about how lucky she is to live in the present day and how hard life was in Georgian England, especially for women. Faye also points out that a lot has changed in the short time that Austen lived, and she wonders what part books might have played in that and other long-term changes. The reader also finds out that Enid has written a letter to Faye in which she worries about Faye's impact on Alice because she is a feminist. After explaining Jane Austen's place in history, Faye goes on to describe her life, from her childhood as the daughter of a minister to her schooling at boarding schools to her life as an adult living with her mother after her father died. Faye thinks that even though Austen's family was well-educated, loved, and fairly rich, Austen felt like she had to be good all the time. Faye thinks that her books take inspiration from her hard life while also making it easier for herself and her readers. Faith says that Austen started writing at a young age and must have felt a sense of control and excitement in her work. This shows that writers have a strong desire to do their job. Faye talks more about the dangers that women in Georgian England faced, especially during childbirth, and says that Austen's choice not to get married or have children was a wise one. Faye looks at Austen's early letters and writings to show Alice how much Austen valued herself as a writer and understood the power of fiction raising invention above description. But Faye also says that it is pointless to try to figure out what old papers mean. She says of the information about Austen that is available, you can pretty much draw whatever conclusions you want. Faye says that she will give Alice more analysis later, but she ends the letter by telling Alice that she needs to pack for her trip back to England. In her next letter, Faye talks about her job as a writer especially how hard and tiring it is to travel and meet with her fans in person. She thinks how Jane Austen's life would have been different if she hadn't read her work to her family and friends at home and listened to how they reacted to it.
Faye tells Alice that every fantasy writer needs to pay attention to the people who will read their stories. She tells Alice to always write for the real people who will read her books. She thinks about Jane Austen's writing table in her family's home, where she was often stopped, and wonders if being so close to the people around her might have helped her write better. Faye also thinks that writers have a moral responsibility to their readers because books show how people should and should not act. In The City of Invention, it's easy to see how causes lead to effects, which gives readers good ideas about how to live. In one letter, Faye tells her sister Enid that she is not changing Alice. Faye also asks Enid to think about getting back together with her. She insists that she didn't base a character in her book on Enid, even though one of the characters makes bread rolls for her husband the same way Enid does for Edward. Faye tells Enid that she misses her and that she hopes they can get closer. Faye keeps writing to Alice as she gets closer and closer to London on her way back to England. She goes into more depth about how Jane Austen's books relate to the politics of Georgian England. She argues that powerful people in any society need to read good books like Austen's to understand the lives of those with less power. Faye focuses on Emma, one of Austen's books, and how it says something about how different or not different the classes are. In the middle of their communication, Faye suddenly changes her mind about Alice's book and tells her that she should still try to write it. From then on, she gives Alice advice in between her thoughts on Austen. She tells Alice to be aware of how hard it is to finish a book and how scary it can be to show it to the world once it is done. Faye talks about how hard it is for people close to the writer to see themselves in their work, like how Enid sees herself and Edward in Faye's writing. At one point, she sends Alice a part of a short story she is writing about this topic. In the story, a young writer named Grace Dalbier finds that writing a successful book hurts all of her close relationships. Faye tells Alice not to write about her own love life because it will be boring, but Alice keeps writing about her college boyfriend and a married English professor having a series of affairs. Faye also brings up the idea of the city of invention and compares reviewers to bus drivers. She tells Alice to pay attention to them, but to pay more attention to how people respond to the house she builds. Faye tells Alice, though, that she shouldn't believe everything she says. Instead, she should look through the letters and only use the ones that seem useful. Faye goes back to studying Mansfield Park and Northanger Abbey, two of Jane Austen's books. In the second one, Faye looks at the difference between the main character, who is good, and her evil, but clever, enemy. She thinks that the two characters might represent the conflict in Austen herself, who was sweet and good on the outside but had a rebellious spirit inside. Faye even wonders if Austen's early death was caused by this intense struggle, which makes her sad to think about. Faye tells Alice that Jane Austen died at age 41 from a disease called Addison's disease, which got worse over time and could not be treated or even identified at the time. Even though Austen's death was sad, Faye tells Alice that death is just a part of life and that she should use it as motivation to do more while she is still living. In the last letters of the book, the reader finds out that Alice did not pass her college tests and is thinking about going to a different school in America, which Faye has offered to pay for. Enid and Edward seem to think that Faye is the reason why Alice failed. But Alice gets a surprise offer to print her book, which makes Faye happy. Faye tells her to keep studying books anyway so she can find a balance between analyzing and making things. At the end of the book, Alice's book has become a big hit, selling more copies than any of Faye's books. Faye is happy for Alice's success and starts thinking about writing a new book. She tells Alice that the thrill of it all makes her think that writing might really be the way to live forever. Lastly, Faye says that she will be having tea with Enid and Edward. She hopes that they will have a good time and not talk about writing or feminism. About the author Faye Weldon was born in England and grew up in New Zealand. When she was 10, she moved back to England and went to college in St. Andrews, Scotland. After being a famous ad copywriter for a few years, Weldon quit her job to write full-time. In 1967, she released her first book. She has written more than 20 books. 
Her latest book, After the Peace, came out in October 2018. Weldon has also written a lot for TV, radio, and the stage, and he has written non-fiction books. She was given the CBE, a British Order of Honor, in 2001. Weldon died on January 4, 2023, at the age of 91, in a care home in Northampton, England. Hope we summarized it fully and you liked it. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel so that we are motivated to create more videos.